When it comes to your finances, I like to operate with rules of thumb. And today I have 17 rules of thumb for you. Well, I'm gonna do a part one and a part two, only if you leave a thumbs up in the comments below. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll break down each fundamental rule for you as it pertains to your finances. And make sure before we get started, hit the subscribe button below so you see these videos every single Monday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. The first rule of thumb is your mortgage payment or maybe even your rent payment. We wanna keep this within 25% of your take-home pay. And this is gonna include principal, interest, insurance, and taxes. And a lot of you might escrow your mortgage. And so then, therefore, it's just one big lump sum payment. So therefore, if you're making $6,000 per month in take-home pay, $1,500 or less would be kind of the target that you're looking at. And this is gonna go for rent or owning a home. Now, one caveat you wanna consider when it comes to this rule of thumb is that if you are a young professional and you're likely gonna be increasing your income pretty substantially, then I am very okay with going a little above the 25% rule because you gotta think about it. We have a 15 or maybe 30 year, or even in some cases a 40 year term with your actual loan, and that's a fixed monthly cost. And as you increase your income, that monthly cost becomes a smaller percentage of your take home. So if you're like me, where I started Deloitte at $50,000 per year back in 2016, and then in five years, I doubled that. Well, we want to consider that that income is going to substantially increase. Now, you have to be careful and make sure that is a natural progression of your career and you're not at the very highest heights of your career where you won't get an actual income increase. So be careful with that caveat, but I'm okay with going up to 30% in that situation. Number two is still pertaining to homes and I typically say three to five times your income, your gross income that is, will be an okay purchase price. So therefore, if you are in $100,000 per year gross income before taxes, insurance, experiences, all that kind of stuff. I'm okay with a $300 to $500,000 home. Now, the more important rule is number one, but if you're with number two, you're likely gonna fall within number one, as long as there's a decent down payment on it. Number three, when to refinance. Typically, if interest rates drop 1%, that is when you wanna to start to consider to refinance. Anything lesser than that, it doesn't always make a whole lot of sense because of all the additional costs that can potentially come with a refinance. So it's something to look into if 1% or greater does happen. I know all the millennials out there think that we're living in a period of crazy interest rates, but if you look historically, five, six percent is not that crazy. How to prepare for home maintenance. You wanna set aside one percent of your home's value every single year for home maintenance. And trust me, I've lived in two houses in eight years and I've had about 74 dishwashers. So be very careful when it comes to this and make sure you prepare. Pay off debt or invest. And I get that question quite a bit. And if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm debt free and I literally have zero debt, not even including a mortgage. And that's the way I like it. And I always say, do what makes you sleep at night. However, I have a great actual framework to walk through. And I want you to calculate both scenarios. I want you to calculate extremes of both sides. I pay everything to debt or I invest everything first. And you're gonna see the huge separation. Then I want you to get to the middle ground and saying, what if I pay off some debt? What if I you know, invest a little bit and then get to most likely a common ground, middle ground that you feel comfortable with and allows you to sleep at night because life is bigger than a spreadsheet. Now this obviously doesn't include like credit card interest. It's like 19%. This is more so like a 4% loan or a 5% loan or something reasonable that is maybe okay to leverage to some extent. Now, you know where I stand with debt. I'm not a big fan, but you can do you. Another question I get pertaining to debt is how much debt should I have? So as a percentage of your gross pay, 36% or less on a monthly basis is what you should be handling. I know I said I have 0%, but I know there's a lot of people out there that do leverage debt. And for all intents and purposes, a house, a car is pretty reasonable. As long as you stay within 36% or below, I think you're in pretty good hands. Just be really careful getting tied up in too much debt to where it's a little hard to manage if something else pops up in life. And that happens all the time. So student loans as it pertains to debt and how much student loans should you take on reasonably? College can be a wide ROI as far as the return you're going to get on the investment that you have into college. So don't just go to college because your parents told you. Make sure you have a plan in place. And so to come out with a lot of debt, I've seen people north of $300,000 in debt making $100,000 per year. Be very careful when it comes to this. Here's the rule of thumb. Make sure that your debt, total debt from all of the years in college, is no more than your starting salary at your job. So therefore, if you have a $70,000 salary, 
I'm okay with $70,000 or less to get you through school. Now, the goal is to pay that student loan off is there's no attached asset and there's no good debt with student loans. Although some people online make a case for it. But we aren't going to say that student loans are good debt. We're gonna pay those off pretty quickly. So if you're coming out of school with $100,000 in debt and you're making only $50,000, you might wanna reconsider what you went to school for. And the last rule of thumb I wanna talk about today before we go into part two next Monday is the 2410 rule as it pertains to cars. So what do I mean by the 20, and I say 20, not 24, 20, four and 10. So 20% down payment, no more than four year term for a car and no more than 10% of monthly cost for your car maintenance, payment, oil, gas, all the things that add up. Making sure that you stay within that framework is going to make sure that you're okay and you're not over leveraging a car. I've seen so many people take on BMWs right outside of school when they're making 50,000 and they're $100,000 in student loan debt and then they go take a $50,000 loan out for a BMW. That is foolish, don't do it, be smart, and if you can, pay for a car with cash because that's what I do. So those are the first rules of thumb and I'm gonna add the additional part two next week only if enough people put the thumbs up on my post below and then I'll share with you guys the remaining ones next Monday. Would love to do that so make sure you guys go down below and hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna take your finances to the next level and not just operate with rules of thumb, go ahead and sign up for a free call with my team. We'll make sure that you're qualified in order to work with us and we will take your finances and your dreams to the next level within Budget Dog Academy, where my average student saves an extra $19,000 per year just when they first start with me. And then beyond that, we're gonna maximize their budgeting, their investing, their estate planning, their taxes, and you name it, it's there. It's everything encompassing personal finance and it's a six month program to work with me one-on-one -on -one, as well as a group setting. This is a mid four figure investment. So please don't come to this call with the idea that this is a free program. This is a six month one-on-one -on -one, as well as group setting with me that's gonna take you to the next level and we get results and our results do the speaking. So I'm gonna stop here. And if you want to go below in the link below and go ahead and book that free call. With that being said, I'll see you next Monday for our part two of budgeting rules of thumb. And I might even get into investing rules of thumb in the future. So talk to you soon and thank you for all your support.